What is going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. It is Friday, and this is Friday Night Live. Thank you all so much for being here. Yet again, on my favorite day of the week, got to say what's up to the chat who is already here. I apologize about being a couple minutes late. It's been crazy uh, in my home today. Uh, what is going on, Isaac? Yo, Isaac, I stopped by your shop. I don't know if you saw the video I dropped today, but I stopped by uh, Comics and Collectibles in South Sacramento. Peter, what's going on? Simon, Dan. All right. So, uh, guys, yeah, uh, crazy stuff's going on. I'm back out in my room, so I'm hoping the internet will be good. But uh, we had a, a, a bathtub spout replaced in the hall bathroom in our home, and they replaced it wrong. There was a leak in the wall. We had mold in the master bath, which was on the other side of the wall. So our whole bedroom is like in containment right now, closed down. It's a mess in the house. I've been dealing with that all day. Thankfully, I was able to get out here in time to hang out with all of you guys. I thought I might be uh, running late. Philly Bourne, was going on, Dr. Doom? Uh, but, but here I am, guys. We have an awesome show to go over today. Uh, we have a, an awesome talking point, but I got a few things to get to before we get into the talking point. And that talking point is uh, how you should invest in the current comic market. I've had some questions as of late. Uh, a lot of people saying, you know, is it is it a good time to jump into the hobby or, you know, how should I collect? Being that the fact that it seems that prices of everything are just shooting through the roof. So we are definitely going to be talking about that today. Myth Lab, what's going on, Pedro? Yes, yes, happy, happy Friday, man. Uh, it's it, It's been a week. So guys, again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. We are running my 5,000 subscriber contest. I'm going to remind everyone what you need to do in order to enter in just a second. I have a package from State of Comics to open with you all today. If you haven't checked out stateofcomics.com, Go check them out. Their link is below. I also will be giving away a little stack of books here. So big shout out to um, Apple who won this two weeks ago. He won the giveaway by answering the question right in the live chat. And he said, you know what, Chris? I'm going to pay it forward. Give my winnings to, to someone else. So I threw in a couple more books here. I forget which ones I threw in, but I'm giving away a High Republic number one, third print. All right, and then we got uh, some uh, Adventures of Superman, Funeral for a Friend, uh, some Batman, Silver Surfer, X-Men, uh, True Believers, Taskmaster, First Appearance, and then a Street Fighter Poly Bag, uh, Hyper Looting, Loot Crate comic book. So I'll be giving this away today to a lucky winner. Miguel Poole was going on. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to ask you all a, a question, and the first one to get it right is gonna win these books today. So, um, again, check out the links below, everyone, guys. I I do have my patron for all my patron supporters that are in the house right now. Big shout out to you guys, uh, Dan, Pedro. I saw Simon in here, um, Philly born. So you guys can always check out my Patreon page to see how you can support the channel via Patreon for just $3.99 a month. But I do have a YouTube membership for only $1.99 a month. So it's you know even more affordable if you guys want to help support the channel. Uh, when it comes to my Patreon supporters, every month I take every dollar that I earn from my Patreon after like they take like 35% off top. It's crazy. But uh, I, I invest it back into my channel. So uh, a few months back, I purchased uh, Adobe Premiere uh, to do video editing with. For, from last month, I, I purchased a gimbal, which I, I, I was going to bring it out here to show you guys, but it's in the contamination zone in my room right now that's closed off. But a gimbal, for those that don't know, basically is a handheld uh, a device has got a handle and it's got remote controls that allows it's a stabilizer and you shoot video with it and it can move your camera or your phone around like this and pan out at different angles and whatnot. Uh, so I'm going to be using that. I used it for the first time for my journals journey episode two that I posted today. I'm still getting the hang of it guys. So bear with me there, but I love showing my patron supporters how 
you know, their three ninety nine a month really comes back and helps this channel because everything I do, I put it back into this channel. So, um, also you get, of course, the extra perks. And I'm going to talk about some of the extra perks that you get for being a YouTube subscriber or excuse me, a YouTube member and a patron member. We're going to get to that in a minute when I talk about my 5k sub contest. Prime time is in the house. What's going on? There's Apple. What's going on, Apple? Matt. What's up, Matt? Again, thank you guys for being here. Um, let's see. So what did I cover? Uh, combo book cannon. As always, it's Friday. We got an awesome show tonight. We are going to be announcing the winner for our combo book cannon 500 subscriber contest tonight on the show. So if you all enter that contest, you're not going to want to miss tonight's show. But even if you didn't enter, come on over. We got some awesome news uh, uh, to go over tonight. We're going to have an awesome show as always. So if you aren't subscribed to combo book cannon, that link is below as well. And of course, my link to my official journals comics merch uh, is below as well. It's finally getting warm where I'm at. So I'm going to be, uh, the, the hoodies are going to be uh, hung up for a little while here because it gets really hot over here in, in the Sacramento Valley. So um, yeah, but I'm going to be rocking the, the tees for sure. Still, uh, we got tees. We got, uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you got babies or, or young kids and you want to get some journos merch, I got some uh, some onesies. Uh, for the for the little babies, I got some uh, kid sizes as well. So go check that out. We got mugs, stickers. Anyways, that's that. So let's do a, a reiteration of everything that we're going to be talking about. We got the main talking point that we're going to get into today: how you should invest in this comic book market currently, right? But before we do that, I'm going to be unboxing a package from State of Comics. Uh, we're going to be doing a little giveaway. All right. And then I'm going to be talking about my 5,000 subscriber contest. So let's get into that last part right now. My 5,000 subscriber contest. For those that have not entered yet, I'm going to tell you right now all you need to do. All right. And I don't have the prizes because those are locked away in the room as well in a box. So, but there is another prize that's added to it. Our sponsor, one of our many sponsors, A1 Comics, is donating a $30 gift card to the prize basket for my 5k contest. And you can live anywhere in the States uh, and you can use that gift card on their website and they can ship books to you. You don't have to be in the Sacramento area. All right. So um, this is what you need to do in order to enter. You need to be subscribed to journals, comics and pop culture, YouTube. All right. If you have an Instagram, you have to follow me on Instagram. That's this right here at journos underscore comics. All right. If you don't have an Instagram, don't sweat it. I'm not going to harass you about it. All right. But if you do right there. And lastly, you have to be subscribed to comic book cannons, YouTube. So go check out our YouTube comic book cannon. That link is below live shows every Friday night. Let me repeat that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram and subscribe to comic book cannon. Once you do those three things, Go to any video, go to any video on my page and comment, I'm subbed to you and comic book canon. And that's all you need to do. I will see your comment no matter what video it is. It's all you need to do. So uh, again, we're going to be running this for, for probably a good couple more weeks. So you guys still have some time. Uh, but so now with that out of the way, let's do an unboxing, huh? Let's unbox uh, this little package right here from state of comics guys again if you haven't checked out stateofcomics.com i get my uh final uh uh my, my cutoff orders from them usually i do at least like i've been doing like one one order a month final order cutoff so uh I, I don't think i did one this last month though uh that's just because i went crazy on my previews orders but Ryan, the owner of State of Comics, really awesome dude, running an awesome, awesome shop. And I highly recommend you guys go check out stateofcomics.com if you haven't done so yet. Here we go. Let's see what is in this bad boy. It's been a while. So I'm not too sure what we have in here nice and packaged extra safely we got some bubble wrap 
in the Gemini mailer. Uh, uh, let's see. We are back. I apologize. I apologize, guys. This is the one thing about me being out here right now um, and not being able to be in my room. So again, I apologize. This is uh, I, I just have to say it is frustrating me. It's frustrating me because I'm here to give you guys a product. I'm here to give you guys a show and I can't depend on on my Internet. And it's it's utterly ridiculous. It's it's really a disgrace to AT&T um that 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 this happens um so i i truly apologize uh i i'm i'm in the middle of trying to get this worked out i really am so just uh bear with me everyone i hope within the next couple of weeks that uh that i get this situated it's been an ongoing struggle that's probably given me some gray hair so uh i i, I do apologize i do all right but let's get into this unboxing here from state of comics uh, let's see what we got. All right. We got this beautiful dynamite number five of five. I just, I think this is a Perillo cover. Look at that. That is beauty. Awesome stuff. Now, I don't know why I picked this up. It's the second printing of Amazing Spider-Man number 57. Maybe I just thought it would be cool to have a second printing. I don't know. <laughs> Tom, what's going on, man? Um, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I was doing. Uh, I, I, I uh, took the live show into the bedroom and plugged it in via Ethernet to the router. But unfortunately, right now, my room is in a uh, lockdown because we had a leak and uh, there was some mold growing. So they just had to come and close everything off today to get rid of that. It's been, I'm telling you, man, I, it, my, my, I've had the Parker luck. It's funny because Spider-Man is my guy. Peter Parker is my favorite superhero. And uh, you know how they say the Parker luck, man. I got the Parker luck. It's so ironic, but here's that. <laughs> All right. What else we got? Woo! Oh, buddy. All right, guys. I am so excited. I didn't get one or two or three. I got four. Carnage. Black, white, and blood. Beauties. So, interesting enough, I haven't sent out my CGC order yet. I might just have to send one of these in. Maybe, 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 <laughs> yeah, and maybe I'll throw one of these in a giveaway. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna be throwing one of these in a giveaway. Maybe, um, maybe my next patron uh, giveaway. At least one, at least one, maybe two. 
Ah, I forgot about these. I'm so happy that I finally uh, got those. So, all right, all right. Two Fat Guys pull list. What's going on? Shadow. Oh, you got, yeah, waiting on yours too. Yeah, yeah, awesome. All right. Okay, guys, let's do a little giveaway. Man, I'm so happy to have finally got those. We're going to do a little giveaway and we're going to, I'm going to ask you guys a little trivia here. All right. So I'm going to see how well you all have been paying attention. All right. We're going to, I'm going to pull it. I know, I know what my number is, but I'm going to pull up the phone just in case. So this is what we're going to do. I have over 18,000 comics in my collection. I'm pulling up my CL, CLZ app. I didn't give anything away yet. Did I? Nope. I have over 18,000 comics. I have like four short boxes that haven't been entered into my CLZ app yet. All right. But I'm going to ask you all the question and I don't want you guys to answer in the comment until I, until I comment go. All right. Or I'm going to actually, I'm going to comment the question and the answer has to be below my comment. Okay. So this is for this stack of books right here. Uh, if, if the winner is outside of the U S I'm definitely open to shipping it out to you, but I might ask you to, uh, help pay for shipping. Um, or we could work something out. You could DM me. Uh, I just, you know, I don't want to necessarily spend like if you're in, I, who knows in, in shipping's like $30, maybe there's a, a different way that I can, uh, uh, get these to you or maybe even get you a, a different prize. But we could talk about that. But what I'm going to ask you is this, all right? I have over 18,000 comics in my collection. And again, don't answer until I type the question in the comments, okay? I want somebody to answer how many Marvel comics I have in my collection. Again, do not type it yet, okay? Keep in mind that I have over 18,000. What I want you to do is give me a flat number rounded number by the thousands so like 1000 2000 3000 4000 an even number and i'm going to round my number to that closest thousand cuz obviously the number of books isn't exactly at a thousand mark so i'm going to type the question in the comments right now ken what's going on ken nepzer all right, here we go. Guys, I've been so busy with everything today. I haven't even had a chance to watch the Suicide Squad trailer. I have I have eight oh, over 18,000 comics in my collection. Rounded to the nearest thousand, how many are Marvel? All right, guys. Once you see, no jumping the gun. No jumping the gun. Once you see the comment, the first person to comment right is going to win this little stack of books. All right, here we go. All right, and here come the guesses. Let's see. Oh, man, they're coming in fast. They're coming in fast. Yeah. Woo, Ken, I, I only have uh, 18,000 plus in the collection. I wish I, I would have 37,000 though. All right, we got a winner. We got a winner. I'm gonna let a few more people people's uh, comments come in real quick though, but we have a winner. And so far only one person Got it right. I think. Let me double check. I'm going to scroll back up. It looks like we got them all in. Man, some of you guys are generous, generous with the Matt with 17,000. I do have a lot more DCs than that. <laughs> Dan with the 15. Uh, let's see. Let's see. If I, I think that. Yep. All right. So the winner is. Peter, 12,000. That is correct. I have slightly over 12,000 Marvel comics in my collection. So, Peter, uh, we'll talk. Shoot me a, a, a message on, on Patreon, Patreon or, or, or 
DM me via uh, Instagram. I'll get you your books. Shoot me your address. And I'll send these bad boys out. Awesome. Right on, Peter. You know me too well. <laughs> yeah, I have, I think, uh, six, six out, close to 7,000 DC books. Is that right? 12,000, 6,000. That's no, no, not even that. I think I have close to 6,000 because I have a couple thousand of like indies or like 1,500 uh image and indies and in and, and all that so all right congrats to peter good job guys thanks for playing all right all right okay all right we talked about my 5k subconscious and what you guys need to do to enter uh we we did the giveaway all right uh one more time i'll remind you all 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern tonight after the show head over to the combo book canon and check our live show over there but let's talk about investing in comics in the current market where do i start with this where do i start bullseye what's going on i've had so many people comment in my comments lately and i've been in facebook forums and reading people's posts and they're like with everything skyrocketing right now it's like you know what should i buy or should i not even like it's you know there's just there's a lot of emotion to what's going on with comments right now uh, I think we can obviously uh, focus on uh, blue chip keys. Uh, we can focus on any type of spec book that that gets hot. And, and once it gets hot, I mean, it gets flaming hot. 9.8s. 9.8s continue to uh, uh, double and quadruple in value. So while many will tell you uh, it's people manipulating the market, <laughs> It's shill bidding. It's just people shill bidding. Uh, if you want to hear my take on that, go, go watch that video. Yes, show bidding exists, but I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. This is how I want to approach this topic and how I think we need to uh, address this before we dive into the details of where we're at today, like post-COVID. or Not post-COVID, but in, in COVID right now, right? One year into this. Because a lot of people are going to sit there and they're going to say, oh, it's just because of COVID. It's because people aren't working and they're getting stimulus checks or bonus unemployment in, 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 uh, payments and they're, they're just spending it on comic books. Before we get into that, I need everyone to understand that they need to look at the comic book market pre-COVID. I did a video a couple of days ago talking about five Avenger books. And what they did since the characters in those books debuted in the MCU. You know, I did First Appearance of Vision, and, uh, First Appearance of Falcon, and, and we looked at numbers and I broke it down. I said, this is what it was at before their debut in the MCU. This was a, a rough fair market value. And then I did the year after their movie debut, and I did value for that. Then I did a pre COVID 2020 fair market value where I took the year. Uh, from 2019 to March 2020 and computed a fair market value for that time period. And then I did fair market value for the last 12 months. All right. When you look at pre-COVID comic book market, you have to understand that the market was already trending in this direction. The comic book market was already trending in the direction that it's going right now. All right. Did COVID help? Absolutely. I have to look at all the variables and say, yes, COVID helped. And not just because people are getting stimulus and they're just blowing in on comic books, but because people don't have the same expenses that they did pre-COVID. Talked about this before. People aren't out dining out all the time. People aren't spending gas. Like, look, my commute, I only, my work, the school that I work at is literally 10 miles away from me. And I was spending a couple hundred dollars plus on gas every month. You know how many times I put gas in my truck over the last 12 months? Twice. Twice. <laughs> and I have an old truck and uh, it's only a, a, a 15 gallon tank. Twice I put gas in my truck over the last 12 months. P 
people are working from home. Um, people aren't going to the movies. So there is a lot more expendable income that's being put into other things. All right. But you have to look at pre-COVID market. The pre-COVID collector's market, especially with comic books, was already on the up and up. 2019 was a booming year uh, for, for Diamond in the publishers themselves. And that's not even considering the secondary market, right? So when people ask me, should I get into comic books right now? Should I invest right now? Is it just a bubble? My answer will be, it's doing the same thing that it's been doing for years. Does that make sense? It's doing the same thing that it's been doing for years. And I'll go back to the 90s. And that the 90s was this big crash. And yes, a lot went tumbling down. But if you look at the blue chip key market, it held strong. I've talked to shop owners that, that lasted through the 90s, through the turmoil. And they said the thing that kept me going was back issues, was back issues. So I know it's tough for a lot of people right now to come into this hobby and look at certain prices. There are countless books that have been dollar bin books for decades that are now 10, 15, $20. There are books that you could get standard back issue books for three to $5 that are now 15, 20, $25. So I understand that it's kind of deflating, but if you want to be in this hobby, you have to ask yourself this, is it worth it, right? So if you want to go take a trip somewhere, right? And you're worried about the price of gas, man, I remember when gas prices were $1.50, now it's $3.50 a gallon. So that means, are you going to get in your vehicle and drive around? You may be more cautious of how many miles you drive, but look, you're not going to be stuck in your house all day long. You're going to go drive. You're going to pump gas and fill your tank up if you want to go somewhere. And my point is this, if you want to collect comic books, you can't look at the, the, the current market and have a negative outlook. Just don't be here. And I'm not telling anyone not to be here. I want everyone to be here. But if you're going to get into it and have a negative outlook about it, maybe it's not for you. If you're not willing to go take that trip down to the ocean, whether it's a day trip or stay the night, and you, you're not willing to spend the cost of gas, then don't go. Stay in your house and enjoy binge watching something on Netflix. If you're not willing to come into this hobby and pay the prices of where these books are at now, then maybe you shouldn't come into the hobby. Because what we don't need in this hobby is folks coming into it, put dishing out money, thinking it's one thing, and then looking back at their decisions and saying, man, it's freaking... Uh, a bloated market, it, uh, it's shill bidding, it's it's people manipulating the market, it's YouTubers manipulating the market or, a, or, or an app manipulating the market. And I can't get books that I just want to read anymore, right? This is making me not be able to get books because I just want them to read them. If you're going to do that, think about getting into knitting or something, or I don't know, all right? Or maybe you should just read People Magazine. But hey, even People Magazines are like, what, eight ninety these days? You got to consider inflation as well, folks. That's a real thing in anything that we're purchasing, right? Um, so that's that's my number one, one, number one point. The market is healthy. And this is what I say all the time as well. As a collector who owns a lot of books, I know that it may be tough for me to get my hands on, on books that I don't have. Look at Uncanny X-Men 266. Right before COVID hit, I was right there. I put it on my 2021 want list or 2020 want list. <laughs> and I was right there. I, I almost bought a, what was it? A 9.4 for 120 bucks 
off of the Mercari app. But I made an offer for like $105 and they didn't accept it. And I said, I'm good. I said, I'm good. Nah, I don't even want to pay about $100 for this book in this grade. I said, I'm good. Now a 9.4, you're probably looking at at least twice that, at least, at least twice that. So what does that, what does that do to me as a collector? It, I'm mad at myself for not pulling the trigger when I did, but it's okay because guess what? It shows the market is healthy. And if the market is healthy for books that I don't own, then the market is healthy for all of these books that I do own, right? So why am I gonna get mad that the market is on an upward trend? I have 18,000 books that I'm sitting on that, that, that I don't have to do any work and the market is doing the work for me. So let's go back to the question. Is it worth it to get into this hobby? and invest in comic books right now. The bottom line is you got to know what you're in it for and you got to be willing to take the risk. Um, the one thing that, that, that is never certain is the future. And just like any market, nothing is guaranteed, you know? Um, and, and, and we still are unclear of how we're going to come out of this COVID thing. I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be essentially fine as an overall industry. I think there's going to be some cool out periods, but I always say this, don't be scared of ebb and flow. When folks, this is what your, your, you know, uh, stock brokers and stuff would, would tell you when investing in stocks, don't panic. When, 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 when the, when the, the stocks start dropping, when the market isn't doing well, don't panic. Hold, hold steady because it's going to happen. Every market has ebb and flow and peaks and valleys. And I know if you come into the market late and you're paying a, a premium for a book and it drops, I know it's gut wrenching. It can, it can cause a lot of anxiety. It, it really can. Watching the stock market, watching the comic book market day in and day out. If it's doing this or even this, it can be gut wrenching. I get that. If it's doing this, you're like, all right, like you're on a constant high. But if it starts doing this and you start seeing that negative red, I get it. But don't panic. That's what I think is going to happen in the near future with some of these key books that have really gotten hot. I mean, let's talk about Ultimate Fallout 4. Let's talk about Ultimate Fallout 4. Ultimate Fallout 4. What did it pass? In the 9.8, it passed 3,000, 3, I believe. Triple of what it was about a year ago when folks said, it ain't going to hold. Remember when it hit 1,000 and folks were like, it ain't going to hold. 3K plus, right? Do I think that this comic book has the potential to, to decrease? Absolutely. I do. But I always talk about thresholds. This book, in my humble opinion, will never be close to a thousand dollar book anymore in that 9.8. But here's another thing. When, when a market wants to not bottom out, but take a dip, all right, you have other things that could come back and help impact the market on an upward trend. And for this character, that's something that can happen for a long time to come because we have Into the Spider-Verse 2 coming out. We might have another video game and we might see Miles in the MCU sooner than later. So when you think about this book having cool off periods, it it can, it can. But I think those cool off periods are going to be so minimal in terms of how many other variables are going to keep popping up to keep pushing this book up higher and higher and higher. All right. You have other situations like West Coast Avengers 45 you know, that I think has, it's more volatile. I definitely think that book is going to cool off uh, quicker, um, just depending on the role of white vision in the future. 
depending how long we, we don't know when we're going to see him again. It might be maybe three years before we see him in the MCU again. It might be next year in uh, Multiverse of Madness. We don't know. And that's going to depend. If we don't see White Vision again for a couple years, that, that book, again, in my humble opinion, it's going to cool off some. Will it ever be a $5, 10 $15 book ever again? I don't think so. That that's a, That's raw copy, obviously. So, again, we go back to the question. Should I invest in comics? You have to be willing to take the risk. And I talk about this all the time. Now, let's go to this. The other question is this. And then I'm going to get to some uh, comments here in a minute. The other question is this. How should I invest? So it's the if I should get into comics. And then it's the how I should invest. The only thing I need to tell you guys is this. It's like buying a car. I like... When, when I when I'm looking for me, I, I like cars. I like trucks. I like Ford trucks. I like classic Ford trucks, like uh, uh, mid '80s to older. But I like the new trucks too. The new, like the last few years, the Ford trucks, man, like dual dual cab. Um, I'm loving them. I hope to have me one one day. My truck is an old '89 Ford Ranger, <laughs> right? But it does the job. Um, I like uh. I like old school Chevelles, but I also like modern sedans. I love the new Camrys and the Toyota uh, uh, Camrys and the and the Honda Accords. Man, they're clean. Man, they're clean. Leather seats, sunroof. You know, new, fresh. Speak all, all the high tech stuff, right? So, when I go out to buy a car, what do I ask myself? Well, the first is, what do I like? What do I like? I want me like a 1970 Chevy Chevelle, right? That's what I want, souped up, candy painted or something like that. Or I want me a brand new 2021 dual cab uh, Ford F-150, <laughs> right? Limited, right? Can I buy that? I don't know. I got to look in my wallet. I can't afford those things. So it's the same thing. How should I invest? Well, can you afford a Hulk 181? Because if you can, even though it's as high as price as it is right now, if I had the money to buy one, I'd buy it. I'd buy it. But guess what? I don't. So here's the thing, though. I'm good. If I need a car and I go to the car lot and I see the 2021s, Ford F-150s, I might hop into one and smell it, feel it, be like, all right. I might go hop over to that brand new uh toyota camry sport hop in feel the leather seats see all the gps and the surround sound speakers and the heated seats and like voice activation and cars that could dry themselves and all this stuff but i'm gonna hop out of that car and i'll probably go find me like a 2008 honda accord that has like 200,000 miles on it because that's all i can afford but i'm gonna be happy with that because it's still to my preference it's the same thing with collections. I can't go and buy a uh, un, uh, uh, Hulk 181 or I can't go buy a um, giant size X-Men number one. So what do I buy? I spend I spend 20 bucks on a Marvel team up uh, annual number one to get at least an early appearance of the new X-Men team because that's what I can afford. I don't have. Amazing Spider-Man number 101, the first appearance of Morbius, because I can't afford it. So I'll go spend 20 bucks on a Marvel team-up number three that has the third appearance of Morbius because it's what I can afford. So again, it really comes down to this. What do you like and what can you afford? What do you like and what can you afford? And if you end up spending money on something that you regret, or you end up spending money and, 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 and it's money that you didn't have. And now, you know, you can't pay your car note, right? Or you're short on rent and you want to hop into a Facebook group and blame it on, you know, market manipulation or it's those damn flippers or speculators ruining the hobby. Do yourself a favor. Go take a couple deep breaths and look in the mirror and say, it's on me. It's on me. 
there is something out there for everyone in this hobby. There is something out there for everyone. Comic books are meant to be enjoyed in so many different ways. We read the stories and fall in love with the characters. We look at the art and fall in love with the artists. We fall in love with the writers. We collect floppy issues. We collect trade paperbacks. We read digital. Then we go and watch the cartoons and the movies. And then we come back to the books we love going to the comic shops and talking shop. We love coming here and hanging out and you guys listening to me ramble on. There's superhero genres. There's mystery genres. There's horror genres. There's romance genres. There's comedy genres. There's sci-fi. There's fantasy. There's young reader. There's mature reader. There's something here for everyone. And although for someone like me who collects runs, it is tough. It's it's tough for me to to complete, to think about completing some of these runs. I might not ever do it because the market keeps going up. But guess what? I'm spoiled. I have 18,000 comics. If I can't fill a run because a couple issues are priced out of my price range, am I really going to complain about that? I'm like Scrooge McDuff swimming in comic books and i'm gonna complain because i don't have uf4 buy it when i could for 50 bucks. i'm so happy for everyone that bought that book that's able to either flip it right now and make money on it and that goes to any book that i don't own and i'll keep doing what i do and guess what i'll keep after my Amazing Spider-Man 101 or my Amazing Spider-Man 50s. And hope one day I really hope to have an Amazing Spider-Man number one. But guess what? Until I have it, I'm not going to blame anyone else. And I'm going to keep enjoying this hobby the only way I know how. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Make sure you make smart decisions. Find out what you like. Find out what you like. If you like to invest, if you like to take risks, if you like to speculate and flip, if you like to read, if you like the art, um, just find out what works for you. Find out what genres you like, what artists you like, what writers you like. Find out if you don't mind reading digital copies to where you could, because you don't want to take the space of hoarding physical books. All of these things matter and it really depends on you. And you just have to ask yourself the right questions and allow yourself to, to tell yourself, I'm enjoying this hobby the best way that I know how. With that being said, let's get to some of these comments, guys. I appreciate you letting me ramble on there. All right, all right. Fable, what's going on? Missing Link. Ace of Spades, tough book. I'm on a 67 Mustang Shelby GT500, you know. <laughs> That's what's up, man. I'm on a 70. I want a candy-painted purple 70 Chevelle with pinstripes. That's what I want. <laughs> painted purple black pinstripes called the batmobile <laughs> all right all right collect what you like what brings you joy in this hobby absolutely simon mavern appreciate it appreciate it yeah man you know and again I, I, it's like it's such this is this is such a hard thing to talk about and answer because it's so broad, right? It's so broad. And the questions, you know, you, you gotta like that's why I like really taking in your guys' questions and answering specifics. Like, hey, like I really like the X-Men, and you know, I like signature books. Should I get this 9.8 uncanny 266 signed by by Jim Lee? and pay like a hundred dollars more or should I get it raw unsigned and like press it and clean it and send it into to slab for myself and you know, things like that. And then it's like, okay, well you like X-Men. Are you into slab books? Why do you want it? Is it for your own personal collection? Or are you trying to flip it? What's your budget looking like? How do you buy month to month? All these things are things that you should be asking yourself 
every time you make a purchase, whether it's how many books you put on a pull list, whether it's you making a budget for key books, you know, whether it's saving up for a big key book or maybe spreading out a hundred dollars a month to get like value key books, you know, quantity over quality or quality over quantity. All of these things really depend on the individual. SG, appreciate you being here. Hope you subbed. Um, and uh, if you want to be entered into my 5K subscriber contest, make sure you sub to me. Uh, go sub up my uh, comic book canon YouTube. That link is below where uh, me and my co-host Jeff, we have live shows every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And then go comment on any one of my videos and say, I'm sub to journos and comic book canon. And I will see your comment and you will be entered into my 5K subscriber contest. Hey, he says, I would hire Chris to clean and press a bunch of my comics. I'm just down south in California. Oh, yes, yeah, Southern Cali, man. Look, I, I, d d let me tell you all. Anytime I go into a comic book shop, and I see things out of order or like in old nasty bags. Like I honestly want to tell them, I'm like, Hey guys, throw me like, throw me a few comic books and let me hang out here for a couple hours and rebag and board and organize your books. Like I would so do that. I would so do that. I would so do that. And you don't even got to pay me in cash. Just pay me in some books, you know? Oh my gosh. So any, any comic book store owners watching, if you want me to come in and help organize, I will work for books <laughs> without question, without question. And maybe a green tea latte from Starbucks. <laughs> Louis, what's going on? Raph, Raph says, I love seeing the comics I collected as a kid in the 80s and 90s finally be worth something. That's what I'm talking about. That's a way to be positive. I love it. I love it. Maverick, I also learned to go with your gut. I missed out buying a ROM number one for 9.8 for 90 bucks before it blew up. Same with 330 Thor. I missed out on 337 as well. Yep. Hey, it happens. Look, and that's the thing. It's like we can't have everything. There's too many comic books out there. There's too many comic books. Where did you get the shelves that are holding your short comic boxes? I'm assuming you mean these. I got these from um, two different places. Amazon and Home Depot. And they're basically the same, the same shelf. One is just red and the other is black. These back to her red. This one's black. Um, yeah, Amazon. Check out Amazon. Just make sure they're they 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 fit short boxes. I forget the. I think these are like thirty two inch width because they have to be long enough. There's smaller ones that that the box will topple off of. But uh, yeah, Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, Target. Actually, I I got um other ones. They're they're not this big. They're shorter. That are behind here. I got those from Target. But they're not they're not too hard to find. Fables an organizing freak. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, I'm an organizing freak, but I'm so unorganized because I'm always behind. All right, guys, we got about 10 more minutes before I head out to go get ready for the comic book canon show. We are uh, a little under an hour away. Matt says YouTube has been a huge part of me getting back into the hobby. I absolutely, Matt. Let me tell you guys. Look. I've shared this story before. I'm going to share it again. I I mean, I got back in the hobby, you know, 17 years ago after, you know, my crazy teenage years of being a juvenile delinquent and turning my life around. And, um, you know, then I got back into it. House of M, Civil War, that Civil War hit. And I was like, yeah. But, um, you know, it wasn't until 2015. When I started building this room out here that I was looking on YouTube for how to build comic books, custom comic book shelving units. I built this myself. This stores, it, it has pockets, cubbies for long boxes. It has 18 cubbies for long boxes and then the top rack and then the, the desk shelf and then the bookshelf on top. I went on YouTube looking for how to build do-it-yourself comic books. 
And that's how I got pulled into this comic book community. And there was no looking back. And I'll tell you, that's when I really started to learn, guys. That's, I mean, I was collecting for, you know, what, 20, over 25 years of my life at that time with a few year break, right? But I didn't start learning until I became a part of this this community. And it speaks volumes. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful. <laughs> and then my kids telling me, you know, hey, make a video showing off your comic books. And then that's what brought me and led me to this. So very, very happy. Comic book canon in the house. My other half. And uh, I'm going to be going and getting with my, uh, my co-host, Jeff, in a minute to get ready for that show. Um, yeah, yeah, as G, let me some comic book cannon. <laughs> Pay me in comics, Gia. Ha <laughs> ha. Who said that? Louis <laughs> Gia. Yeah, man. I almost did a song with MCA. True story. True story. It, it, it never panned out, though. But much, much respect to the OG. Uh, let's see, let's see. Dr. Doom. Comics got me into a healthy hobby. It got me away from all the people I shouldn't have hung uh, out with, like truck dealers, etc. Absolutely, man. I, I tell you, man, you know, I, I've gone into it. I won't dive into it too much right now, but I, I've talked about it a little bit on my channel and how comics were one factor. Comics were one factor that in my kids and me having kids at a young age are some factors that pull me out of a, a, a place that I, that was leading to nowhere, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm very grateful. Even even after I was older, I you know had some trying times, and uh, it was uh, going back and reading reading my Spider Man comics that really kind of helped me ground myself. So I'm telling you, man, comics are are so much more than just some petty little you know art form or or book that is meant for and to read right so much more swaggle is in the house all right hey guys i want to remind everyone too there are a lot of content creators in the chat right now if you guys see folks that you're not subbed up to please go give them a sub and follow so many great people creating content on youtube uh swaggle is another one Obviously, you saw Comic Tom in the house. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, you're probably living in a uh, alternate dimension. <laughs> um, we had uh, Angel in the house who has a uh, his Gotham Knight channel. Um, yeah, so again, I always uh, encourage everyone to go sub everyone up that's in the chat. So, guys, I, I wanna I wanna do a quick revamp. Uh, you know, recap on everything we addressed today before I head out of here. And again, thank you all so much for being here today. Um, again, back to the topic, just to put a final word on it. Should I come into this hobby? Absolutely. If you have a love for comic books, don't let the prices deter you. There's so many ways that you can continue to enjoy the hobby as long as you make smart decisions. But if you don't think it's for you, then maybe you should find something else. But if you have some type of love for this hobby, come into this hobby and find out what works for you. And that goes to the question, how should I invest? Again, it all depends on you. Look at what you like, figure out what you like and figure out what your budget looks like because it's always a balance of the two. I like so much that I could buy out a comic shop when I go in there, but I only have a certain in my pocket, so I can't. So that's always a teeter-totter, right? And look, I always say this too. We evolve as collectors. I may be looking for X-Men books one day because I'm trying to complete a run, but maybe I hear of a new story coming out or a new character, and then I want to focus on them. And that's okay, as long as you are happy with the decisions that you're making. So really, really enjoyed talking about that today, guys. Okay, and again, um, Peter, congrats to Peter for uh, winning the, the, the little contest today. Peter, I will get in touch with you about uh, sending your, your books off here. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, and if you haven't started reading uh, Star Wars High Republic yet, uh, I, I've been enjoying it so far. Absolutely. So we'll get into, I'll get in touch with you. We'll send those off. And again, again, for all those that have not heard my 5,000 subscriber contest, 
I'm going to tell you one more time what you need to do. All right, real simple. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram, three. And three, subscribe to Comic Book Canon. Link below. And then once you do that, comment on any one of my videos and say, I am subscribed to Journos and Comic Book Canon. All right? That's that, everyone. Again, thank you so much for another awesome show. Appreciate all of you for being here. Again, big shout out to all my uh, Patreon supporters that come every Friday and that are always here in the chat. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I will hopefully have more updates to the prizes for my 5K subscriber contest uh, as of next, next week, but I'll keep it running for at least two more weeks. Okay, guys, we're going to let the contest run for at least two more weeks. At least. All right. So you got some time to enter, but don't, don't sleep on it. Get it done while you can. It only takes a couple of minutes. So uh, again, I look forward to uh, seeing you all in about 47 minutes over on the cannon. Thank you all for being here. Till next time.